here on Morning Live. Now, as promised, a uh, conversation with the Patriotic Alliance president now. Now, uh, the leader of the party, Gaten McKenzie, uh, who is now the mayor of the Central Karoo District Municipality in the Western Cape, uh, says that he is going to show South African politicians how to lead from the front. Now, McKenzie was recently elected mayor, and it sparked a conversation when he declined perks that come with the position and instead opted to donate 100% of his salary to the much-needed work to transform the municipality for the better. Gaten McKenzie joins us now to have a conversation about these and other developments. Mr. McKenzie, good to have you. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you, thank you very much, Sakina. Thanks for having me. We've waited, we've waited for a while, but it's <laughs> it good to have you. It's my first interview, actually. Yeah, uh, so we are grateful that you made us your first stop. You must have connections to get me here too early today. <laughs> we try. So, you know, obviously it hit the headlines when you became the mayor. Let's talk about that and you becoming the mayor of the Central Karoo uh, District Municipality. What's your affiliation or affinity? to that particular region and municipality? Well, uh, yeah, it did in the headlines. I think firstly is that I, let me say, how did I end up becoming the mayor? I asked our people, like, what is it? Because I'm aspiring for high office. And I said, what is it that I lack? And they said, you, la you lack, you, you got business sense, you've done well for charity, but you lack public office experience. And I said, go and find me the most bankrupt, the highest unemployment, figure uh, the people where they can't even pay salaries. Go and find me the worth around the municipality. And they came back with Central Karoo and I said, that's where I want to go. And that's how I, ended, uh, how I ended up there. I wanted the one that is totally dysfunctional, that's broken, people don't have jobs, people can't even pay, the municipality sometimes cannot pay salary, one of the B municipalities. And I said, let me go there. So there wasn't really an affinity. It was more to prove what I can do by turning it around in a certain time frame. So we'll come back to the municipality in a moment, but you say that you aspire to higher office. So what is the ultimate objective here? You know, whether I go to parliament, whether I become the premier of the Western Cape, and whether I, one thing I can tell you is that come 2024, South Africa will be run by a coalition government. And what you see in the city of Johannesburg is what's going to happen in 2024. The PA will be the kingmaker, we'll decide uh, which side becomes president and we might choose ourselves you never know so speaking of that how, how do you plan on doing that because many would say if you look at the patriotic alliance that the patriotic alliance is a party that would have its genesis in a very narrow uh, colored nationalism if you will no no that that wouldn't be a lie when they say that we do have our genesis from there but here's the issue we are not a colored party, we are a colorful party. Number one, you see, Kenny Kunene is the deputy president of this party and he's not a colored. And if you look at our leadership, mostly, uh, it's from different races, white, black, including uh, colored people. But there's a voice missing in South African politics. It was the colored voice and it makes very many people uncomfortable when you say that. But the colored people were not part of the voice that is needed on the political table. We have now brought them there but we are not exclusively bringing the colored voice. We are bringing the black voice, we are bringing the Indian voice, we are bringing the, 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 the colored voice. So many people still think that we have a, in Guiani, you know in Guiani, there's no colored people in Guiani, but we've got a, we've got a councillor in Guiani, an elected councillor, Guiani. I was looking for colored people, I couldn't see one, but PA has got a seat in, in Guiani. Tokoza, we won the vote in Tokoza. Eden Park. We won that word. So I'm saying that we are not exclusively a colored party, but we are not going to deny that we were born out of colored nationalism. Because in South Africa, uh, colored children's CVs were being thrown in the bin. Colored children were uh, denied NASFAS funding. Colored children were not given due opportunities. And we have fixed part of that. And we are still endeavoring to fix more. So, yes, the ANC. It's got majority black supporters, the DA, majority white supporters, the Freedom Front Plus, uh, majority white. What is wrong with the Patriotic Alliance having the majority colored people uh, as the base? So how do you allay the skepticism or the fear of those who bought into that 
initial message of the Patriotic Alliance when you now say we are a colourful party um, and people become scared that once again their voices will not be heard, that once again issues pertaining to coloured people in South Africa will be pushed to the background and to the periphery. Yeah, I think it, it will be foolish or stupid of us to concentrate only on coloured people or, or anybody concentrate only on one race. I think that for me is racism. But to say that your voice is being put on the agenda, your issues are being put on the agenda, and I think we've got enough goodwill from our people. They trust us, they know we are not sellouts. They know we will never sell out. I mean, we would not come here and, and denounce colored people. We will not come here and now forget about the agenda of colored people. We are saying that you will never ever grow if you only concentrate on one. There are parties that concentrate solely on colored people. People that want to remain only for colored people to join those parties. But I aspire to lead the party of all people and not only colored people. Some have said that Gayton, in the first instance, and the Patriotic Alliance by extension, is actually a proxy for another party, uh, that being the African National Congress. Right. How do you respond to that? We kicked the African National Congress out in Nelson Mandela Bay, all seven MNCs. In Joburg, I had a choice to either go with the ANC and EFF coalition or the DA coalition. I went with the DA coalition. In Ekurleni, I had the same choice with the ANC EFF coalition or the DA coalition. I went with the, with the DA coalition. No, how can I be a proxy? I have proxies in my business. In my businesses, I've got proxies. A proxy will not go against my wishes because he's a proxy for me. Now, how can we go against the ANC? Uh, if we are the proxy. You see, people will find fault with everything we're doing. Some people are also accusing us of being a proxy of the DA because we went with the DA there. We are the only party that said, Sakina, at the beginning, we said we'll work with anybody. At the beginning, when people were saying, uh, I told John Steele, and I said, don't come with your morals to me. I'm not here for morals. I'm here for power discussions. When we started the coalition talks, he said, let's first see if our morals are aligned. I said, whoa. I can't be taught by you about morals or anybody else for that matter. I'm here for power. We want power as the Patriotic Alliance. So people will accuse you, but nothing is more tangible than us being in coalition with the ANC in the Western Cape, being in coalition with the DA in Johannesburg, being in coalition with the, ANC, with the DA in other places. How could we be a proxy of anybody? We are free. We are our own bosses. If they make us angry like last week when they called me a thug, we left. And if the ANC tomorrow calls in Kimberley, the ANC didn't want to promote our guy to the position we discussed. Uh, they don't want to give him the MMC position, the MMC position that we have negotiated. I said, guys, tomorrow touch is a move. We are going. So we are not worried about ANC, DA. We are here for power to change the lives of our people. So let's talk about these coalitions. The DA. So just to be clear, was the reference to you as Gayton McKenzie as being a thug or was it about political thuggery of the Patriotic Alliance? And is there a difference either way? No, there is a huge difference. It wasn't about me, Gayton. They said it is thuggery. They never said Gayton is a thug. They said it is thuggery. But that wasn't our main reason. The main reason why we left is because the DA prevented, they did everything in their power to prevent me from becoming the executive district mayor of the Central Karua. So what did they do? Because you were elected unopposed. No. At first, there was two elections. Mm -hmm. The first elections, I beat them. And then the second one, out of five parties, nobody wanted to stand against me because they know the people love me. And then, now, our fight with the DA is the fact that they went to the ANC leaders in Beaufort West. And they said, let's work together to prevent Gayton McKenzie. Now we're like, this is our partners. What type of Judas menace is this? So the ANC then told them to go to hell. And we said, like, we work together with you in Naisna. We work together with you in Matikama. Now you go to the ANC that you criticize publicly, but you go behind the corners because they know what I'm going to do in the Central Karua. They know it. And they know after that I'm taking the Western Cape. Nobody has ever shaken the DA. The ANC couldn't shake them in the Western Cape. All the parties in South Africa couldn't shake them. We shook them. We took power in many municipalities in the heartland of the Western Cape. They planned to make the Western Cape an enclave away from South Africa. That plan is glory because 
of the PA. We will never allow that. We will never allow the Western Cape to become independent. That is a plan covered in naked racism. We will fight that, and now the PA, the ANC is no longer a factor in the Western Cape. It is the Patriotic Alliance. And what I'm going to do in 100 days in the central Karua, will show people I am the leader they've been waiting for. Coming to that in just a sec, but with regard to your position right now in terms of Patriotic Alliance coalition agreements with the Democratic Alliance, are there still any or have you closed the door on that? No, we've not closed the door. We, we would have closed the door totally on them. The reason why we didn't close the door is because we didn't only sign with them. We signed with Freedom Front Plus in Johannesburg and in Corleni. We signed with Action SA. We signed with Scope. We signed with IFP to govern together. So we cannot punish the, the other parties for the mistakes of or our disagreement with the DA. We are actually meeting next week to try to patch up and see if we can make peace. Uh, because peace is very important. You know, whether you like us, whether you call us tax, whether you call us papatiti, whether you call us what, we are affected in politics in South Africa. So do tell, uh, when you say you're going to make peace, um, what would be for you the non-negotiables with the DA? Now, for me, the issue is that I'm going there out of respect for the invite. I don't think anything's going to come from that. So just basically going through the motions? I'm going to go through the motions and, uh, because I, I do believe there's something called common decency. When you're with people in a coalition, you cannot go and go to the other people that you are black, bad mouthing the whole time and say to the ANC, let's stop him from becoming. And I said to them, right on, uh, Tertius, you guys can try all you like. We will see the day of the vote. And when the day of the vote happened for the executive mayor position, I was uncontested. None of them were brave enough to stand up against me because they knew it will be a whitewash. So let's talk about the municipality that you now run. And geographically, this district municipality is the largest in uh, the Western Cape, if I'm yes, not mistaken. It is, it, is, it is. So it is the largest geographically. So quite significant um, with uh, three major towns in the area. So you promised that you are going to do in 100 days what no one has ever done before for this particular area. And you're going to do this while not earning a salary from the municipality, not accepting any perks. You said you'll bring your own bodyguards. Everything that you need will be provided by yourself. A day what are we now on? We're now on day 41, I think. Day 41. So yes. the countdown is well and truly on. Yes. So have you made any specific promises in terms of what needs to be done in those 100 days? Yes, I did. You know, there's big things I wanted to do, but it is being hampered by two small, very emotional issues for me. And I cannot, I cannot really speak to, to business people about the big issues I want to do because of these two things that has been going for more than 80 years. Since people have been born, I met an 80-year-old lady. She's been using a pet latrine since she's born. She's never seen another toilet or used another toilet, probably seen one, but never used another one. People still have pet toilets. People still go to the field if they want to, 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 to use a bathroom. They go to the field. And I cannot talk about what I really want to do if this problem that no party, including the DA, has not been able to solve. And I said to myself, I asked them, why is there per toilets? And they said, there's no budget. It has not been budgeted for. They can't do it now. I said, I will do it in 100 days, and I will raise money to make sure that no one suffers the indignity any further. 80 years is enough of people that, to use these toilets. So I said, in 100 days, if I've not fixed and changed these toilets, I should resign. In 100 days, if I've not fixed the swimming pool for the kids in Beaufort West, and he said, no, it's winter. I said, well, we will put heated pools uh, for the people. I said, if we don't do that in 100 days, I should resign. And I know all my enemies are going to come in 100 days uh, to come you know, and see. No, the media will also be there. I know that for a fact. And they will find that I'm a leader of my word. Those toilets will be installed in 100 days. We will not take one cent from the municipality. We are busy with fundraising. The people are busy helping the poorest of the poor. The problem in South Africa is all politicians make promises, including myself. But what I'm trying to change is a, a promise should have a date to it so that you can see that this person is not a liar. Because if I say I'm going to fix the toilets, I can fix it in 2027. 
But I'm saying in 100 days, because we need some accountability as politicians. And why I don't take a salary is I come from jail. The taxpayer looked after me. I can't be the person that the taxpayer look after forever. I have got businesses. I'm a successful entrepreneur. And let me rather, my conscience wouldn't allow me to take a salary and drive mayoral cars while there's not enough ambulances. So I told them, take the, the ambulance, take the mayoral cars, take the bodyguards to go and do police work. I will come with my own protectors. Take the, the, the cars, go sell it and buy ambulances with the money and use my salary. For I gave my salary to the CFO of the municipality. I said, all the worthy causes you pay for, don't put it in my account. He created a special account for really worthy causes that he deems fit. And then my salary goes there. Because I just think that politics got a bad name. And it takes now a guy with a bad past to come and help to change that narrative. So how much is that salary that you are not taking? You know what, I, I'm not even going to lie to you. I, I had two amounts. One person said it's 1.4 billion a year. Another person says it's, it's 800,000 a year. I do not know, honestly. I do not know. I'll have to check uh, how much am I, am I giving. But I've heard different, hmm. different, different stories. But I also don't take any perks. Like, I've traveled to Cape Town three times on, on, on government business. I pay for my own hotel. I pay for my own travel. I pay for my own car and diesel, petrol, whatever. All I'm saying is that it doesn't make me better than other people because I got a better financial situation. But I believe that I have a duty to show people that I'm not here to take. I'm here to give. So is this a forever situation or is it a situation for now where it's, you will not draw a salary? It's forever. If I become president one day, I will never take a salary. Because I, I just feel that South Africa has given me much. And to do that much is given, much is required. And this is a sacrifice that I want to make. For me, there's a bigger personal selfish interest in this whole thing. And that is, there's this invisible uh, scar that a lot of people are walking around with in South Africa, which is a criminal record. I, I read this morning that 32% of the MPs in, in the UK has got criminal records. 32%. I was, I was shocked when I read that. But there's a lot of people walking around with criminal records. And those people, I'm an inspiration to them that it is not a death sentence. You can change your life. So for me to succeed, it's not only Gayton McKenzie succeeding, it's not only the Patriotic Alliance succeeding, it is people saying that if this guy can become an executive district mayor, I can become better. I just, that's my selfish personal interest. And when people talk about ex-prisoners, they just talk bad stuff. But now they can say something good about the ex-prisoner and say, look, he's not even taking a salary. Look at how he's changing the thing. Because the main thing is, I'm going to make that town, the Dubai of South Africa. Many would laugh. And I'll explain to you how I'm going to do that. If. Yeah, please do. You see, I look at the Central Karwa. And I said, what do you have that can turn the fortunes of this? They have three things in the Central Karwa. They got one of the biggest uranium mines in South Africa. Secondly, they got fracking, gas, fracking, then they chase uh, powerful interest, uh, chase shell out. I will bring them back. But that's not immediate because there's no a lot of water. That's a five year plan. But the first plan that's immediate, in my first hundred days, I am going to make the Central Karua the energy hub of South Africa. I'm going to build more solar plants and farms, wind farms, than any other area in South Africa. I will, in my first 100 days, on the 6th of June, I will build the first solar farm in the Central Karua. Businesses are knocking my door down. The Karua is open for business. I'm inviting all the business people. We are going to produce energy and we're going to sell energy to South Africa. We are going to become, we're going to make our people in the Central Karua energy independent. If you look at the Central Karua, it's got three things that other areas don't have. It's got sun during the day, it's got wind during the night, and it's got evacuation. Evacuation is basically the means to take power to Johannesburg, to take power to the Northern Cape. And that is what we are going to do. The first solar plants will go on, and in 12 months, I would have finished 12 of them. 12 solar plant farms. Wind farms are being erected as I'm speaking. And we are going to we've engage a company that runs the biggest app in the world, that's a stock exchange for energy. They have agreed 
to come to the Central Karua and build the head office in the Central Karua. I'm going to build a factory in the next 26 days. Well, it's built already. I'm going to start uh, for women that's 50 years and older to get jobs uh, in this factory because nobody hires women. Everybody wants the youth, the youth, the youth. Nothing wrong with that. But what about people that's in the age bracket of 45 and 65? Politicians said these people are not employable. But why are they in parliament sleeping at the age of 75? <laughs> Gaten, we are out of time, but I have to ask you about uh, something that I'm sure you're very aware of, uh, that you are now being labelled as being xenophobic. And one of the stories I read was that when you became the mayor, um, some of the foreign nationals in the, in the town, um, they were a bit jittery. Uh, yes. as a result of your election. So let's talk about that and your view on foreign nationals. Are you xenophobic? And, you know, let us understand your position and that of the Patriotic Alliance when it comes to uh, foreign nationals in South Africa. My position is the same as the position of the Patriotic Alliance. Our position is very clear. We are very ambiguous with how, where we stand. Number one, we want all illegal foreigners to be mass deported out of this country. That's number one. Number two, you cannot have asylum here if there's no war in your country. Which asylum seeker goes to home December? We are not stupid. Number three, if you are a legal foreigner in this country, you cannot have a job that doesn't require of you to have a special skill. So those three points, are, that is our position as the Patriotic Alliance. They call me xenophobic. In the current context, in South Africa, the word has lost its meaning. When somebody calls me xenophobic, I hear patriotic. Because in this country, foreigners should go home. We as the Patriotic Alliance call us xenophobic, call us what? Our children are not having jobs. People here, the restaurant, the service industry, 100% has been taken over by Zimbabweans, working in all the restaurants in South Africa. When the Patriotic Alliance take over, as you see what's happening in the Central Karua, I've done nothing yet. They are packing by themselves because they know I'm not here to sell people out. They can call me xenophobic. I don't really care. But foreign national spaza shops are funding terrorism. Terrorism, ISIS is living amongst us here, and we are funding terrorism. The South African government is scared of these people. We will show them what is leadership. Zimbabweans should go to their country. They have more to say about our political situation here than fixing. They are so sweet when they are in Zimbabwe. When they come here, they got a lot to say. But there, they said, as we say in Africans, finger of the lip. Yeah. But they say you have made millions of dollars in Zimbabwean mining interests as a mining consultant. And now, when you come to South Africa, you say, hey, go back. The issue that I'm having is if they can, I didn't go to Zimbabwe through the river going past crocodiles. I went with an investment of 10 million U.S. dollars. And I said to the Reserve Bank, yes, my 10 million U.S. dollars. Let me invest in your country. And I made money. Not only in Zimbabwe, I've made, I'm an international business person. When I, I, provide, I provide jobs. I didn't sell drugs to the children like Nigerians are selling drugs here. I didn't take out children, Zimbabwean children in prostitution. I was in Zimbabwe, and when I started losing money, I left. I'm in other countries around the world. So they mustn't think I came there with a... They're even now saying I was born in Zimbabwe. Yeah, to, apparently you were from Gweru. The first time I went to Gweru, I was probably 37 years old. I am born in a Hildal Bluvertain Olympia Premier School. Echo for Bluvertain, I think it's a kid for Bluvertain. These people, it's just desperation because they can call me xenophobic, but leave, illegal foreigners will leave. And f f some people don't want to say this, I'm going to say it. Foreigners that are legally here. You can't be legally here and be a nurse man. Uh, and, take, and then nurses are sitting in Soweto, in El Rado Park, and they don't have jobs. But because our women don't give birth on the bed in, in Rahima Musa. They give bed on a bunker or sitting on the floor while a foreigner is chilling. I was saying during the, if I was the leader during, the, during COVID, when people in El Rado Park couldn't access oxygen and foreigners are getting oxygen there in the hospital, I would have taken that pipe out and put a South African. A country should have no conscience. A country that should not have no conscience. A country should look after its citizens first then the con conscience should kick in. If there's a fire, if there's war here, Americans are not going to take uh, Zimbabwean or a thing. They're only going to take Americans. Why can't we prioritize South Africans? They come here, give birth here, while our women on the ground, not under, under the watch of the Patriotic Alliance. Huh?
Kaitan McKenzie, who is the executive mayor of the Central Karoo District Municipality in the Western Cape and, uh, of course, the president of the Patriotic Alliance. No doubt we'll have many more conversations and we'll have to park that one there. Let's get on with the rest of the news at 7.